something very strange has happened in my lifetime, um, which is the complete ubiquitous, ubiquitous nature of uh, the camera and this idea that everybody can take pictures of anybody they want to and take the image of a person and then put it up on Facebook or do whatever they want with it um, as if individual images don't seem to have any meaning whatsoever. Um, you know, a lot of the early scholars were very opposed to photography when it first came into the, the Muslim world and um, wrote very extensively about it. It was a major issue that was debated. And the ulama settled on two different opinions, which they often do. One is the, the rukhsa and the other is the shidda. And this is the mizan of the sharia, this balance between these taking a, a more rigorous position and taking an easier, gentler position. But even the people that took the easier position, if you look at the early fatwas, which I did a long time ago, but they were very interesting. Um, they tended to argue things like the usefulness of these things for science and for teaching people. They, they didn't talk about um, just taking pictures of everything for no reason. Um, and one of the things I think that's happening to people, and I'm talking to the more younger people here, is that you'll tend to miss experiences because you're in this kind of mediated reality that uh, you have to film for some reason. Um, and you'll, you'll just miss those experiences. Um, so, you know, you go to the, 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 the great mosque today and the imam's giving a khutbah and there's all these people like filming it and taking pictures uh, during the khutbah, which I think would have really shocked earlier people. They just wouldn't have understood what you were doing. Um, but it's, it's just something that I want people really to think about. Um, the idea of just taking candid pictures that, um, you know. If you look at one of the interesting things about 19th century photography is almost every single picture you will ever see, you'll never see anybody smiling in those pictures. You will not see candid pictures. You'll always see people in an incredibly dignified mode, even gangsters. Like if you look at pictures of Billy the Kid or somebody from that period, they're standing and they're upright and, they're, and they're, they're trying to look their best because it's a permanent frozen image of that person. And those people, even the worst of them, had a sense of dignity and a sense of what permanence was and what it meant. So this idea of taking pictures when people are eating, you know, I mean, I was literally having dinner uh, and somebody would start taking pictures and I just, I said, you know, the Tuareg actually wear a veil when they eat because they consider it a very private thing, eating. Um, so I just want people to be a little more conscientious about that thing. I would prefer no cameras in, in this uh, uh, room uh, unless you're really authorized to, to do that. Um, and, I, and I would really beware of, like I, I haven't, I've never carried a camera. I've never taken pictures on any of the trips. I've been all over the world. And, and I had a Moroccan, uh, you know, there's a, a Moroccan, um, one of the uh, fuqara in Meknes, and everybody wanted to take a picture, and he, he just, he clicked his heart. You know, he said that's where his camera was, right? just to click the heart. You don't really need to have these images. You know, I was there. Right? You, don't, you don't have to have that Im image. So, there, I mean, there's just so many images in the world now. That's all, it's just flooded. And, and you have to wonder where it's all going. You know, where is this all going? Just nadar lil ma'alat. Where is it all going? The, the internet's just filled with endless images of everything. And the image is losing its meaning. And, you know... I would recommend reading Neil Postman's book, Amusing Ourselves to Death, 
especially the second chapter in that book, which is about image-based societies. And one of the things that he reflects on in that book is why God would make it a prohibition to make graven images in the Decalogue, in the Ten Commandments. Why would making graven images be a prohibition? And he argues that any society that is going to be a society of abstraction and imagination, then the worst thing for a society like that is to produce images. It would be the worst thing. And so if you want to have an abstraction, because God is a complete abstraction, you cannot imagine God. And so if you want to inculcate in a people the ability to have the highest abstractions, then the preference for that would be not to have images. And so the early Muslims were very, very uh, strong about that. And the iconoclastic movement in the Orthodox Church, which was centered here, uh, because of their interaction with the Muslims and that seriousness with which they took that prohibition of taswir, of graven images, um, the Christians started destroying all of their icons. And it's interesting that the only icons that we have from that period are the ones that were in monasteries that were in the Muslim lands because they were protected from these fanatical iconoclasts who were going around into all the churches and destroying all the images of the Greek Orthodox uh, icons during that period but that response was a response from interacting with Muslims and you can see this also during the Protestant period where they went and smashed all the idols in the Catholic churches or the images rather um, so I'm not you know I'm not saying don't take pictures uh, people can do that. I'm just saying there's times when it's, it might be useful to think about putting the camera down and just experiencing something, not necessarily through a mediated reality. And that's partly why there's a, a photographer here doing this to do that. I mean, that's why they brought him here so that there, there would be images and, and things like that from this. So that's just, you know, those, that's my own uh, peevish perspective about uh, this this thing um, food for thought that's all so he deals with the